we have seen that all these objects fall to the earth due to the gravitational force. You may have also learned that the force of gravitation is universal, which means that it acts between any two bodies anywhere in the universe. They may be tiny pebbles, two giant stars, or two huge galaxies. The law governing the force of gravitation was formulated by great scientist Isaac Newton in the 17th century. This law is called as universal law of gravitation, which states that every body in the universe attracts every other body with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This means that if two bodies of mass m1 and m2 are placed at a distance r, then the gravitational force between them is given by g m1 m2 divided by r square, where g is the constant of proportionality. Remember that the force is mutual. This means that m1 attracts m2 and m2 attracts m1 with a force of equal magnitude. The force by m1 on m2 is in the direction from m2 to m1 and the force by m2 on m1 is in the direction from m1 to m2. The two forces are in the opposite direction. In the expression for the force g, the constant of proportionality is called as universal constant of gravitation. Do you understand the meaning of universal? It means that g has the same value everywhere in the universe. So, the force of gravitation between two bodies will be the same everywhere. You may recall that the value of g is 6.673 into 10 raised to the power minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square. Because its value is so small, the force of gravitation between small bodies is extremely small. It becomes important only when large masses like those of planets and stars are involved. Let us learn more about the force of gravitation. Let us start with something simple. It follows from the 1 by r square, the dependence of the force of gravitation between two objects. Suppose that the distance between the two objects is doubled, that is increased from r to 2r. What happens to the magnitude of the force? the force reduces to one-fourth. If the distance is cut to half, that is, it is made r divided by 2, then the force becomes fourfold. Now, let us imagine an object is kept on the surface of the earth. This means that it is at a distance r from the center of the earth. It will feel the force of gravitation due to the earth. Let the magnitude of this force be f. If this object is taken up to height of r from the earth's surface, that is at a distance of 2r from the center of the earth, then it feels a force of magnitude only of f divided by 4. If the same object is taken to a height of 2r from the surface, it will feel a force of gravitation only f divided by 9. We conclude that as the distance between two objects is increased, the magnitude of the force goes on decreasing. Now, if the earth shrinks suddenly to half its radius without a change in its mass, 
what happens to the force on an object on the surface of the earth? That is an easy one, isn't it? Apply 1 by r square rule. The force of gravity becomes 4 times stronger. You could ask why in our calculations we take the distance of object from the center of the earth. This is another contribution of Newton. He showed that for an object outside a sphere of uniform density, the sphere behaves as if the whole of its mass is concentrated at the center. This introduces tremendous simplification in our calculations. For finding the force of gravitation on objects on the surface of the earth or beyond, the earth can be replaced by a point mass placed at the position of its center. Otherwise, we would write the force between each particle of the earth and object outside and find the sum of all these forces. Now, there would be millions of such equations. It would be impossible to deal with so many equations. Now, we need only one equation. Other regular objects of uniform density can also be replaced by a point mass at the position of their geometrical centers. The point where the mass of the whole body can be replaced by an equal point mass is called the center of mass of the body. In an irregular body, the center of mass is difficult to locate. The second characteristic of gravitation, too, follows directly from the law of gravitation. If the masses of the two objects are increased to twice their respective values, the force between them becomes four times stronger. Another important thing to remember in connection with gravitation is that the objects do not have to be in contact in order for the force to act. Such a force is called the force at a distance. Moreover, the force between two objects does not depend on the medium between them. This means that if there is a brick wall, a wooden partition or a laid sphere between the two objects, the magnitude of the force remains the same. If we take these objects to outer space, which is almost vacuum, the force between them will still be the same. Gravitation interaction between two objects also does not depend whether there are other objects present around them. Suppose there are three objects A, B, C present in a region of space. Then the force between A and B is the same whether C is present or not. Similarly, the gravitational interaction between A and C ignores the presence of B. Therefore, to get the net force on A due to B and C, we adopt the following procedure. Calculate the force on A due to B as if C is not present. Calculate force on A due to C as if B is not present. Add the two forces. Remember that the force is a vector quantity. Therefore, the forces are added like vectors. Sometimes gravitation can be used to our advantages. In 1977, Voyager 2 was accelerated towards Uranus by using the gravitational pull of Jupiter and Saturn. This cut down the time of the spacecraft to Uranus from 18 to 12 years. Here is an interesting and important insight into gravitation. Although 
gravitational force decreases with the increase in distance, it never vanishes. This means that the gravitational force can act over very long distances. Take the example of our galaxy, one of the largest spiral galaxies in the universe. A star at its edge, about 50,000 light years from its center, is forced to rotate about its center. Not only that, galaxies separated by millions of light years feel gravitational attraction of one another and are bound together in galactic clusters. In fact, gravitation is so important that the whole universe is held together by it. 